Somebody just woke up. I didn't wake him up. He woke up himself and came out of his little box cave. But I think he was hoping he would sit on the floor. And he can sit in my lap there. He does not want to be held to be chased. No, please put me down. Um, yeah, I've done a few things since last week. If you follow my Instagram, you've seen just about everything. But I will show it to you in motion now. I um, did go back to that thrift store Thursday. And <laughs> they had obviously just piled a whole bunch of stuff on the random toy table. So I dug and dug and dug. I only found one more jam music instrument to go with, like, three guitars and the video camera I had found on Monday. So, that's fine. <laughs> there was a guy there. He'd obviously been there for a little while when I got there because he had bags and bags of stuff in his cart. There were a lot of 90s toys on the table. Like, lots and lots and lots and lots of Power Ranger. Some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Some Pokemon things, which I grabbed. And, like, biker, Mike, biker mice from Mars and street sharks and some Transformer stuff. Newer Transformer stuff, not collectible. But this is obviously, that's the stuff that that guy was grabbing. So I got the gym thing. I don't know. He didn't give me a dirty look for it, and it was also on part of the table. I'm pretty sure he picked over, so I wasn't competing with him. I also grabbed a 98 for free toy. It's supposed to, it just, there's a button on its back, it just loudly flutters its lashes, but I love it when they end up half closed and it just looks so grumpy. And a newer Furby. This is from the 2016 Furby reboot. I'm not a Furby fan, I've never been a Furby fan, but I see so many people online having fun with Furbies that since I was already stuffing stuff into a bag anyway, I couldn't resist grabbing these. And I can't remember if I got this on Monday or Thursday, but, well, I think I got it on Thursday. Because on Monday, I left behind a lot of glitter-encrusted LOL surprise minis. Well, no, these are not the minis. These are the surprises. But I went ahead and stuffed her in the bag on Thursday. So these are starting to show up in thrift stores. I've never been interested in them. I'm not sure if I will keep her. I couldn't, didn't think to look for her baby bottle, and I didn't know that she had a sleep mask, but just her curlers amused me. So, got her. And then I went in back to look at the box that all the dolls had been in. Like, on Monday, I'd gotten a few dolls, most of which went on eBay. One I, one I used for parts, and I'll get to her. One of them that went on eBay didn't sell, so I, I, I took her back into the fold of my dolls. I will get to her, too. But anyway, I went back to see if they changed out any of the dolls in the bin of 99-cent Barbies. And these were in there. And these are two different Kimbers. I don't know how well it will show up. This one. this one is the second version, although she has earring holes and paler makeup. Apparently, she most of the second version Kimbers had paler hair than the first version, but this is one of the ones that has the very exact same color as the original Kimber. This is, as you can tell, she has no earring holes. Her hairline is a lot better done, too. So, the two Kimbers. Roxy. Roxy's a little floppy. Kimbers aren't this one especially. The original Kimber's not floppy. She's not stained. Second Kimber has some stains. And the Gems earrings do technically work, although it's too bright in here today to see them, but they were flashing. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them or find new homes for them or customize them or what. Like I, said, I also found, it's not here, it's in the pile over there, stuck to another doll's hair in that bin, Gem Friend Videos belt, which since I found Gem Friend Videos camera before, it's making me wonder where is the video doll? Which, it would just amuse me to find video because she uses the same head sculpt as these. Which, as a kid, I thought it was the same head sculpt as this, but this one is a little different. So, so I don't know if I just am 
there were gems in there that I missed or that they hadn't been put out yet or if whoever originally owned these only liked the dolls with this very similar head sculpt. But I never saw the video. And then Thursday night I go out to the mailbox and there's a surprise parcel of fake fur doll wigs from Fire Spirited, from Safi. Thank you. So that inspired me to have fun going through finding out who should get a surprise fake fur wig. Also in the bag was a factory reject Takara Lika head that, as Safi pointed out after I got it, has a tiny pinhole by the mouth. And no hair has ever been in this head, so she is bald. And this is one of the bodies that James sent. Thank you very much, James. So having a Lika body on hand came in handy. I'm not sure if I'm going to give her really wild hair, you know, fantasy color, or leave her hair free, except, you know, they have that groove molded into them so that you know where the hairline is. Or if I might do a glue hair tutorial on her, because a few people have asked about doing glue hair tutorials. So I haven't decided yet, but so. Thanks to a couple generous people, I have an experimental Ika. But the wigs, the fur wigs, I am... Um, it was a variety. Different colors, different textures, different lengths, different sizes. And one of the first ones I put on a doll, I still had that Ever After High Nina head on the desk. If you recall last week I showed you I got the Nina body. My computer's making funny noises. I got the Nina body with the chewed up foot because I wanted to use just the body. I didn't care about the head. And also the head was rock hard full of glue. And I didn't mention it, but I didn't like the fact that her hair wasn't pure white. It was kind of a super pale blonde. And you know, she had blue eyes too. I'm not fond of blue eyes on dolls generally. So I took the head off the body and it was just laying on the desk. I figured I wouldn't do anything with the head, but one of the wigs that Safi sent was white long pile fake fur. And I realized that I would like Nina if she had white hair instead of the blonde hair. So I spent some time getting all the glue out of her head. <sighs> At least it wasn't the sticky glue. The super sticky yellow glue was just the hard white glue. So I got that out of her head. I put her head on a live body that James also sent. Thank you again. And I painted her eyes brown. And yes, at some point between last week and this week, I stopped at a few different Walmarts and managed to get some Mario themed clothes. I've been, wa I've been looking at this dress for a while since this dress has been released a few times, I think. And this is the one I finally like the placement of the piranha. I like the piranha plant dead center and there are two more in the back. Whenever the child talks me into playing Super Smash Brothers, which I'm still not good at, I always play piranha plant just because I think it's hilarious. So, and Safi also sent a couple pairs of these glasses, which I trimmed some of the bits off to make them a little more restrained. Not that, not that, um, Cat eye glasses are ever super restrained. Anyway, I shouldn't be rambling, I have a lot to show you. And some people asked about these socks. These are the socks from the Made to Move soccer player who had the shin guards on the outside of her socks. There were some versions that had the shin guards on the inside of the socks. So the socks were a little bit bigger. Those bigger socks actually will fit a curvy leg. So that though the Made to Move soccer outfit with the internal shin guards, the whole outfit will fit a curvy, which I think is interesting on the tells part. So anyway, there is one for a wig, surprise for wigs from Sappy. And I pulled a few of the heads out of my head box that had had terrible hair. I mean, the people who sent me the dolls, probably the doll heads, probably knew that I would not use that hair. They knew I would give it fantasy hair, but they probably didn't expect it to be Fake fur, another Mario shirt. I, a lot of Walmarts are setting this enormous, like six foot tall by four foot wide Barbie display in the middle of the aisles with dolls on both sides. And they have 
Powerpuff Girls and Peanuts dresses, and Mario and Care Bears separates. At least the two that I looked at in two different Walmarts did. So yeah, this is a late 80s, possibly early 90s Totsy Sandy head that uh, originally had a lot of really cheap fiber black hair that I cut off and pulled and removed and glued the wig on her. So she's kind of Halloween. I mean, most people are going to look at orange and black and think Halloween, which you know I don't have a problem with that, which is why I also did this doll. This is the body from the Ever After High Nina. And I cut the original feet off and drilled out the inside of the leg a bit and then put on these weird Barbie diver feet that I managed to thrift a right foot and a left foot on completely separate occasions and possibly at separate stores, I can't remember. And I actually really like the way this foot looks in the Ever After High Body. I just as usual, I did it way too fast and made a mess out of it. This is the worst foot. It is off-center. And when you turn it, the, um, the square peg that the ankle is on inside stresses, makes stress damage on the plastic. But I don't care. It's cute. And she can wear socks. And the head is a vintage clone head that someone, I'm sorry, I can't remember who at this point, sent to me. I don't think it ever had hair. I think it was sent to me without hair or else I removed the hair really early on because in my head's box it hadn't had hair forever. So that made it a candidate for trying the wigs on. And I really like this half red and black, half orange wig. And because it reminded me of vintage Halloween decorations, I also... Her eyes are originally blue. They're still kind of bluish green, but I painted over them with green. And as soon as I got her put together before she was dressed, I knew that she would be friends with this one. So I decided to dress them fairly coordinating. And they have interest going on in the back. This is the Jack of the scent. Thank you again. I know I could have folded, there's hair, cat hair on everything. I could have folded the sleeves up so you could see your hands, but I think the long sleeves look looks with it. Long sleeve look works well with a spooky doll. Of course, I don't think they're spooky, but Halloween forever. And we have these two. And another doll that got a, one of the wigs that Safi sent. A few years ago, I had a Ken head on a gymnast-style Ken body, so it just had the cut neck joint. And I rerouted him in a eye-searingly bright green nylon that someone had given me. And people liked him. I eventually gave him to somebody. But after I tried to cut his hair, and I think everyone was disappointed when I cut his hair. But, but since one of the wigs that Safi sent when the small Barbie-sized wig was green, and I had another version of that Ken, particular Ken Sculpt's head, on a gymnast Ken body. I went ahead and put the wig on him, glued it on, and then used glue to style the sideburns in the back. This, it was, a, it's still shedding. It was originally a much longer pile of fur, but I've been trying to gel it and get it under control and trying to style it and trim it. It's still kind of bigger than I want, but I'm afraid to cut too much off. So, I think he might stay here for a while. Also, this body is the Gymnast Ken style body, but it was actually a My Scene Ken guy, so... His original hands are this big, which works okay with the big My Scene guy heads. Oh, by the way, here's the foot. The chewed up foot I cut off of that Ever After High Nina body. There's still some bite marks in her leg, but that's fine. Anyway, so these hands are okay with a stylized huge Mycene guy head, but not with a little Ken head. So I dug through my hand stash 
and I actually did not have an entire set of hands. The hands... I don't know what I'd done in the past. Apparently I'd used the wrist that these hands were originally on for something, and then the hands that had been on this wrist actually had a pair of gloves on them, so when you took the gloves off it was just this like weird flesh color wedge. But I realized that I could take the wedge off and put this on, so I did that. Unfortunately the problem with Dragon Models Limited DML type hands like these is they don't just plug straight in. There's this like little step area. So to really get it to properly work in the body it has to be countersunk and since DML is either from Hong Kong everything in all their sizes are metric so I still don't, still don't have metric size drill bits so all my imperial drill bits are either too large or too small and I tried to use the Dremel and I just made a horrible mess at the end of his arms so he will be wearing long sleeves and watches and bracelets until I finally get that together because it's not pretty. But, and I, th I can't remember if, I know somebody gave me this body, I just can't remember who, I'm sorry. And I made this shirt a while ago to fit specifically on bodies like this with the super broad gymnast Ken shoulders and the pants, and I'm pretty sure the shoes came from James. So thanks again, James, and thanks, Sappy, for the wig. And so I thought, well, I mean, I got these wigs Thursday. I didn't do all this Thursday, but so Friday, I wake up, and I'm thinking about the fact that on Monday I got these great dolls from that thrift store and when I went back on Thursday I got more great dolls. So I'm wondering if maybe going back on Friday they will have a different assortment of dolls. And I thought, no, I don't need to go. I don't need them. Finally, like, 1 o'clock or around noon. Around noon, and I finally said to my husband, who's off on Fridays, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going just, just to satiate my curiosity. And I got there, and they did not have anything new out anywhere. Well, there was another Pokemon, a little squishy Pokemon Poliwhirl that's supposed to shoot, a Poliwag that's supposed to shoot water, and I basically use it to annoy the cats. Anyway, but there were no doll things. They still had two of the Ever After High dolls who still had all their arms and hands, and they still had a couple of Barbies with molded arms but articulated gymnast style legs with high heel feet that were strung on most of them were strung on one was uh, the where it clips into the hips like the belly button barbie bodies generally do but most of them were strung onto the belly button barbie bodies and i thought it would be great to have those legs for all my gymnast dolls that i've been desperately and badly trying to carve smaller feet out of but I didn't want to pay 99 cents each for dolls that were just going to scrap for parts. I know, I'm, I'm a cheapskate. So I left them and I back home and I was thinking, well, I could go back the next week and see if they're still there, see if I've changed my mind. But I remembered that that Saturday was the first Saturday of the month and the way the stores around here work is the first Saturday of the month. Everything in the store is half off. Usually I don't want to be anywhere near those stores because it's full of people, but also usually for a few weeks afterwards the stores are still fairly picked over because they move so much stuff on that Saturday. So I know I don't usually go to the thrift store when the child is home because he hates it, but I bribed him with the promise of either of a trip to Target or a Nintendo eShop card if he would go with me when the store opened first thing in the morning at 8 o'clock so I could go in and grab those bodies. And we did, so I got three bodies with strung on high heel foot gymnast style legs. One body with the legs were on the... If you've never taken apart a belly button Barbie body in the style of legs, there's like a circle in a barrel, and the barrel's in the leg and it slips together. So there was one like that, and then I got those two Ever After High dolls. So I got all the for three dollars, and then I paid twenty dollars for the eShop card. But that's fine. So I got home and I started swapping legs out, and that's when I 
finally realized after it used to be we would take the legs off of the belly button Barbie style bodies and string on gymnast style Barbie legs, the original gymnast Barbie legs, and they would kind of slurp into the leg sockets. It's like they weren't quite big enough. But I didn't make that connection until I started putting the gymnast style high heel legs from the belly button Barbie bodies onto the old gymnast style bodies and in it wasn't pretty. See, here is how the hips are supposed to look in a gymnast body. You see it's skinny, but it's a smooth line. Well, the legs from the bodies that are have bleh, the legs that are meant to go into the belly button Barbie bodies have larger hip spears, so you see it's not as smooth, but it still works. I mean, you can have a smooth line and very few shoe options. Now this is the one that I carved this feet on and did the best job, all the other ones I was lazy or they haven't been carved at all. Or you can have a wider hip with shoe options. I think I like the wider hip with shoe options. So anyway, I grabbed a doll, another custom I had put together a while ago just to mess around and ended up liking it was this doll. The body, yes, another gymnast, another um, Mario shirt. So this body had been a flat foot gymnast body with an irreparably badly cracked neck. So I cut the neck off and smoothed it out and then this is a head from a souvenir doll that I painted some extra makeup on and I gave her a Monster High wig. And I actually liked the combination, but of course I was vexed because, well, I think I made her a few years ago, and for all those years she had big flat gymnast feet. So now she has a little pointy Barbie heel feet. Of course, first thing I put her in is athletic shoes, which she could have worn that before. But she has the hips that really don't fit, but as long as she's dressed right, that's fine. So I did the swaps with these two bodies. I still have one pair of elastic strong legs. These are both elastic strong, which I didn't do a good job. I just left all the elastic tied up inside. If you've ever taken these off of the proper doll, that strung with elastic, they like sew it in, and I don't think I would have the patience to do it. Some of the really, really old ones are on this like rubber. Nope, she's, oh, she's strong. I didn't realize that was strong. The really old ones are on like this heavy rubber bit. Anyway, so I have one more pair of legs to string onto a gymnast Barbie body without accurately fitting if I want to. I. One of the dolls I had put up for auction that didn't sell, and I made it so that she didn't automatically release because I decided I wanted to keep her, was that 12 Dancing Princesses Edeline, Edeline, like I said, I haven't watched the movie, I don't know how it's pronounced, who had the old style ballerina arms with just regular click legs. Well, as soon as that doll did not sell at auction, I ripped off of her original legs and I ripped off the legs from the doll that I thrifted on Saturday and I put those on this body. And this, uh, <laughs> the donor legs actually have a notch cut in the top, which you can't see without taking them off and I'm not going to risk that again. So they actually have a bit more range of motion than these legs usually have. But as you can see, I immediately took the Edeline head off and put it on an old style fashionista's articulated body. The head was initially floppy on this body, but when I looked at it, I could see like a gap where the head met the neck. So I don't think it was because, I didn't think it was because this plate at the top of the neck connector is larger in the older bodies. I think it's because 
this neck must have been just slightly larger and I need to cough again. Hold on. So I remembered the fairly new to me tip that if you boil vinyl, it will try to return to its original shape as much as possible. That's where if you get a doll with a chewed up hand, it's like I tried boiling this, it was way too far gone. But if you get a doll with a slightly chewed up hand, you can boil it and it will sometimes return to normal. Or a doll, I mean I can't, I'm not taking her off to show you, but a doll that's that you've taken the hair out of, you've derooted, and sometimes if you drop that head in boiling water, the original rooting holes would close up quite a bit. So I tried dunking just the bottom of this head, the neck opening, in the boiling water to see if it would make it a little bit smaller. And she's still kind of floppy, but the weight of her hair isn't immediately bringing her head back. And I did this like really late last night, right before bed. That's why she's not dressed or anything yet. I'm also, the last time I had well, the last time I had one of these, I traded her. Um, the time before that when I had one of these, I wiped off her face paint and repainted her. But I also straightened her hair. So I'm thinking I will probably not repaint this one. Because, you know, that's that rare thing is actually brown eyes from Mattel. Instead of beige eyes. But I pro I'm... I'm not sure if I will straighten her hair or if I will make it enormous curls. I haven't decided yet. So that's something that I might have done next week. I'm not sure. I've really, really been wanting to sew. I, I Yesterday I finished, I made myself finish a doll project because I wanted to get ready to sew because this Friday the school had scheduled a word parade where the kids are supposed to pick an, a vocabulary word and a dress to illustrate it. And my child picked the word absurd. So he's going to wear a loud, loud shirt with a hat shaped like a hamburger. And I was going to make some ridiculous pants. He picked out some really light denim I have with bugs and frogs embroidered on it. So I knew I needed to sew that by Friday. But then we got a school today saying that school has been closed due to various illnesses. Um, tomorrow and Friday. And the next week's spring break, so I guess he gets a little extra spring break. So I made myself finish another doll project that I had been sitting on for a while. This was totally inspired by another one of the wigs that Safi sent. You know, I have the Hujo Ayo, who I had kind of random, not Ayo, Hujo Freya. That's all I have left of Hujo Ayo. Hujo Freya, the cat doll, the cat girl, who I had airbrushed a while ago very randomly. So that she looked, I mean, I was thinking of her as looking like a purple watermelon, like purple with green stripes, and it was just too elaborate for me, and also I hadn't properly prepped the, the body, I didn't put down a clear ceiling base coat, so the paint was just like slipping and chipping off anyway. So I used rubbing alcohol and took that all off a month or so ago, and was trying to think of how I could repaint her. And then we got these wigs from Safi, and there were some dark pink wigs that looked like it was about the right size so I kind of stretched it out and I carefully cut some holes for ears in it and it's like the pink wig on the gray cat it's like yes this is my inspiration I want to paint her head pink fading down to the gray so that there's actually not much paint by the joints to chip off and I also decided that I wanted to use that paint from folk art that showed up in Walmart a few months ago it's called color shift paint, but I'm pedantic. It is not really color shift paint. Real color shift pigment, the individual flakes of pigment have the sh color shift properties in it. What this paint is, is it's like one color of mica and a different color base. And what I got is the pink base with blue mica in it. And so I had this idea of, except like pink at the top of the head where the wig is fading down to gray under the chin and on the body. And so I got the paint diluted for the airbrush and I went in and I started spraying it on her and like, wow, this is super sheer. So I had to go and get pink paint, which is not as dark as the pink hair. And I sprayed that on the head and the hands and then went back over it with the color shift paint. And anyway, <laughs> so this is a lot more my style. It's not really very elaborate. But it is very colorful. And she has eyes. Some of the eyes that Queen of Squids made and sent a while ago. Which I knew she I wanted her this doll to have those eyes for a while. 
So, you see her ears sticking out, not too far off from the wig color. And I painted, I just actually just held her arms up and airbrushed all around. And her feet are also pink. So, so her extremities are opaque pink, and then I used the, there is a slight pink tint from that paint, but it's mostly just a sort of blue metallic. I have no idea if it's showing up on here. It's one of those things I don't know, it doesn't really photograph well, and I don't know if it shows up well on the video, but she does have a blue sheen to her. She's not terribly pink outside of where I painted her pink. I'm not sure I'm too happy with where her teeth are. I might try to paint over them and move them farther apart. But on the other hand, I can just consider her done. And now I'm out of things to talk about. I have a feeling this is a long rambly video, but next week we will see, I will at least possibly have her dressed and maybe I'll still have a pair of absurd pants made for the child because I think he still wants them. And I'm hoping I get back to sewing doll stuff. I'm hoping I figure out what I want to do with the gems. And I have a lot of organizing to do, so thanks for watching. See you next week.